Hello, I'm Jenny Thomas. I'm co-producing Femtech TV with Catherine, who's the founder of Femtech Insider. My day job, I'm the director of DigitalHealth.London. We support startups uh, through our accelerator program. We support NHS staff um, with digital transformation projects through our pioneer program. And we do also lots of work in evidence generation for digital health. But my personal passion is femtech. I think there's so um, much that uh, can happen in this space. There's a real opportunity at the moment. And I'm delighted to be talking to lots of people who are doing fantastic work in femtech in London, but also in the UK more broadly. And I'm really excited to be joined today by Catherine Ward from Healthy IO. Thank you so much, Catherine, for your time. I'm really looking forward to asking you uh, some questions about what you're doing in the femtech space um, and particularly how you're working with the NHS. So Catherine, over to you, perhaps you can tell us um, a bit about yourself um, and Happy IO. Yes, thank you. Thanks, Jenny, and thank you for having me. So I'm Catherine Ward. I'm the Chief Commercial Officer and I'm the Managing Director for UK and Europe for a company called Healthy IO. And we're the first company in the world to use the smartphone camera as a clinical grade diagnostic device. Uh, the first company to have been CE marked and FDA approved for doing so. Um, I am a veteran of healthcare, really. I've been in healthcare for 30 years. Uh, the first 15 inside the NHS, actually, as a general manager. Uh, I was then for 11 years with United Health Group, which is a very large commercial healthcare organisation based in the US, but operating globally. And then for three years uh, now, just over three years, I've been working with Healthy IO, which is Israeli based, but I'm running the commercial front end from uh, the UK here. Great, thank you so much. Um, so could, could you just start by telling us a bit about what Femtech means to you and means to Healthy IO? Um, so I think it's, in some ways we're into femtech by accident and it's uh you know our big mission is really to enable the technology in the smartphone camera to really be uh leveraged into healthcare to bring the value of the investment in that technology to uh actually speed up transformation for uh government sponsored healthcare systems and for healthcare in generally in general so um essentially our founder Yonatan Adiri was uh, the Chief Technology Officer for Shimon Peres when he's President of Israel, who's traveling the world, positioning Israel at the forefront of genomics, immunotherapy, stem cell research, some of these really big ticket items that one day will transform healthcare, um, but realize the biggest investment in tech is in the smartphone camera, and therefore that if you could leverage that into healthcare, you could get transformation to happen more rapidly, but you could also get it at low cost to a government-sponsored healthcare system. So, um, We've then, uh, and that's because of the selfie generation, that's because of the 8 billion selfies that are being uploaded to the cloud every day. Um, and that low cost is really because the tech companies paying for the hardware and the software, the consumers buying the device, you should they be able to actually bring it into the mainstream of healthcare and drive real value um, in, in a short time frame. Now where Femtech comes in really is that there are various ways in which, uh, you know, healthcare it has been a very poor experience um, actually for consumers generally, for patients generally, but particularly for women. Good examples of that are in maternity services and in um, services to people with urinary tract infection. So if you think about the current pathway, if somebody has a UTI, they need to access primary care. Um, in fact, I was just trying to get through to my GP this morning. I've tried, I think, five times, haven't even yet got through onto the queuing system to enable me to then wait for anything up to 40 minutes to actually get somebody to put me into a, a dialogue never mind even you know so five times it's just been an engaged signal so women have to call up the gp they have to then potentially wait for the call back from the gp um, sometimes they would be asked to then come in with a sample or to go in and use the facilities of the practice to take a sample um, sometimes it could be three to five days before they even get an appointment so instead um you know the, the the power of what we're doing and i can talk about it a bit later on in in the interview in more detail but is to really make that accessibility for women much more transparent um much more um convenient but also enable them to then get a result and potentially an antibiotic if appropriate at the speed of their own life you know not having to uh, navigate and wait for uh, a resolution. 
So I think that there are very specific areas and maternity, another example, many people who've been through the pregnancy pathway will recall the process of putting a pot in their handbag and carrying it for the day until they're ready. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, and actually taking that part of, uh, of experience away and really empowering women to be able to take responsibility, more responsibility for their own care, you know, enabling them to have visibility into insights into how they're managing their care are really, really important things of what we do. So it, we haven't set out as set ourselves out as a Ventec company, we're, we're a healthcare company, but we have got a couple of our really important lines of our business really relates to women and how women then enable are enabled to, to take control of their, their health. Yeah, well, it certainly means a lot to me personally. I remember when I um, went to see my midwife and unfortunately I had just been to Borough Market um, near the office in London and um, I'd eaten quite a lot of fudge and uh, my glucose level kind of was just through the roof. And so she said to me, okay, we need to kind of see what's going on here. And I was like, maybe you might have had something to do with that fudge I had. But um, yeah, I, I then kind of had this experience of, you know, seeing what my glucose levels were like and using kind of dipsticks and stuff but it was fantastic um being able to at the time i tested uh how the iris product as you know and it was just such a kind of game changer for me because it really it kind of helps empower you um to, to actually see well what happened in the past and you can kind of track things and and it also generated a lot of questions for me i really wanted to understand well, what does this mean whereas normally when you go for your appointment you were just told oh everything's fine you know you don't need to worry about anything but actually i want to know you know i want to know what my um glucose level is or kind of do i have any kind of other problems um so i think it's uh, it's really empowering for for women um so perhaps can you say a little bit more about what you are doing um in, in the nhs and maybe any like great examples that you're proud of in terms of pieces of work because I think one of my reflections um, on how the is actually like you say you may have come into femtech by by accident and there's obviously loads of stuff that you're doing but actually you're a great example of a company that's you know been really successful at working with the NHS and uh, and benefit benefiting um, uh, patients uh, particularly uh, women in um, who, who are cared for yeah Perfect. So I think the really good example to unpack further is around urinary tract infection. And I've given you a bit of a, an idea of the problem that we're solving and the experience that women have had to date. And um, it's extraordinary when you kind of having first level conversations about this in a room. If you have a room that's predominantly women, you immediately have people go, oh, gosh, yes, I know exactly what you're talking about. So many people have been through that process of a feeling a twinge on a Friday night and being despairing because the weekend there won't be any GPs or just starting to, to sense that something might be coming on before they're going on holiday and it just being like a no, not now. Um, and uh, when you pitch or engage with a, a room full of men, it's less obvious as a kind of immediate reaction, but you get this sort of, there is this definite response from people that's really kind of visceral about, oh yes, I know what this is like. So we all know that it's a, a tough issue to, to, um, uh, to respond to. And I think we've had a really interesting journey and sort of transition through this product um, since the first early days. So our first partnership has been with Boots uh, on the retail pharmacy side. And um, we didn't set out, honestly, to be um, in that private market. We've always had our mission to be embedded inside the kind of uh, the government sponsored systems to be accessible to everybody. Um, we haven't, you know, we deliberately haven't kind of targeted ourselves at those with with the willingness and ability to pay. But actually, we've also really, really benefited. And I think um, real kudos to Boots for being visionary about this from mm -hmm. showing it can work at scale through a private sector model and then that driving the NHS to actually have more kind of comfort about mm -hmm. actually this, we know this works and we can then take it on. So we launched with our original model in Boots in December 2018. Uh, that's um, a kit that you buy from the pharmacy you take it home or to the local Costa or to your office, you do, uh, uh, you know, you fill the pot, dip a dipstick, place it on the color board, scan with your phone. So you have an app on your phone that enables this. That result comes back onto your phone. And so back to your point about wanting to know and understand what's going on, you can see that result 
you take that back to the pharmacist and then under a patient group direction, which is a protocol that enables a pharmacist to dispense an antibiotic under the right circumstances, the mm -hmm. pharmacist can then give you an antibiotic. So between that buying the kit, going to Costa, coming straight back to Boots, uh, you get your antibiotic, it could actually be a 20 minute journey, which compared with all of the, the palaver I described before is obviously very significant. Um, so we were in uh, a small number of stores, about 37 for the first six months while we piloted, evaluated. Boots actually produced a research um, paper that was published subsequently on that. And that gave Boots confidence then to build out to 300 stores um, the following six months later and 1,200 stores subsequent to that. So we're now in a good footprint in Boots and we're still seeing hundreds of kits a week being sold through that process. Mm -hmm. um, we have then, in during the COVID um, uh, kind of breakout in April, we started to see that actually people weren't that comfortable even going to a pharmacist mm -hmm. for a service. Um, obviously GPs moved to a much more remote model uh, and we launched then um, Believe, which is our B2C um, model for uh, UTI. So you can go online, you can order a kit, um, providing you're eligible. And there's a chance, you know, you have to kind of evaluate whether you, you fit eligibility, 16 to 64 year old woman, basically not pregnant for the UTI model. Um, and um, having uh, not had more than two UTIs in the last six months, three in the last 12. Essentially then your, um, uh, symptom checking and your results go instead of coming back onto your phone and being taken to the pharmacist they come back onto your phone but also go to our online medical partner who will then take a look at the symptoms and the um, test result and then dispense an antibiotic, antibiotic if appropriate and you can either pick that up from your local uh, pharmacist or you can have it delivered to you depending on your preference so uh, within four hours in London and next day around the rest of the um, uh, country you can actually get again it resolved without even having to leave the house um, we then built a hybrid model with boots actually again in Ireland where we took um, in Ireland you can't do a PGD so that pharmacy model doesn't work in the same way but we realized we could use the back end that we have for the believe model for the B2C actually to enable someone to pick up the kit at the pharmacy to then do um, have the test evaluated by the uh, GP and then you pick it up from your pharmacy again so you're still really driving a pharmacy first agenda it's really accessible it's really easy to get but you are uh, actually then don't have to rely on the pharmacist being trained with the PGD and being able to pick, pick it up from there um, so this enabled us to have enough confidence really to go to the NHS uh, mm -hmm. and in fact a conversation with one of the HSN leads who said hang on a minute you're working in boots at the time this it was um, Mike Hannay who was leading in the East Midlands um, HSN at that point. And I was explaining this because Boots headquartered in his geography and he <laughs> had a lot of uh, uh, engagement with them as part of his kind of bigger industry mm -hmm. engagement in, in his role. And he's like, well, why are Boots doing it? Why aren't the NHS doing it? And I said, well, Mike, you tell me. Uh, mm -hmm. So we agreed we'd run a pilot, which is great. So we had 38 pharmacies in the East Midlands and Nottingham. Um, we went live with exactly the model we'd been having with Boots, but in an NHS context. And in four months, we had a thousand women use the kits. We had 96% of them say they've never seen anything like it in terms of, you know, really wanting. And fantastic. Service. We had, you would not believe the Facebook and social media coverage, which was just tagging, everyone tagging. Yeah, yeah do this, do this. Exactly. <laughs> Did you know? Oh, Teresa. Oh, I was just thinking, I mean, like, the, with like, say I've got like two, like, my two kids with me, just the hassle and having to like, you know, especially at the moment, bundle them all up and all their kits and buggies and everything, get to the pharmacy, you know, and having to do it twice in one day. I mean, what, yeah, I mean, this is, you know, a game changer. Yeah. So we had this um, wonderful uh, experience rolling it out with the pharmacy team from NHS England in the East Midlands, um, along with the HSN. Um, they've written that up this year. So we've now got the kind of evaluation of that, that's showing a return on investment of 11% ROI. And actually it's potentially higher than that because the funding that was being invested at that point in the pharmacy service was much higher than the national contractors turned out for for pharmacy so we think we can bring the costs overall down so it will be even bigger um, saving um 94 percent of pharmacists said they would you know jump at doing it which was great uh women goes without saying were just like uh, effusive about it um so we are now rolling out in lincolnshire mm -hmm. but we have we spent a lot of time discussing and I think what we're really wanting to do is transition to that 
um, GP back end model like we've had in Ireland, that hybrid model, because we think that makes it more convenient for women ultimately, because mm. GP, we have a 10 to 20 minute SLA with the GP partner, which means that, you know, you're getting a very rapid response. You don't have to go back into the pharmacy to get, you know, to, and then wait for your prescription. You can just go and get your script when it's written. And if you don't, if it's negative, you don't even need to go back in. So I think it's a smoother user pathway. Um, so we're going to be transitioning our um, pharmacy partners into that model over the next few months and then um, looking really to position this for more of a national NHS adoption, ideally. So uh, we know it's better for antimicrobial resistance in terms of having a test to um, as well as the symptoms. So sometimes at the moment you do an empirical prescribing in, in um, where a GP will just issue a script without uh, any sort of diagnostic and we know that that means there's more antibiotics out there than necessarily are needed. Um, Scottish um, sign guidance which is the equivalent to NICE have just said that they're now going to, or they've just issued guidance in September saying dipstick is going to be um, recommended for the future pathway as part of that, that whole picture. So I think we're going to enable really that stronger guidance on antimicrobial resistance to be implemented across the NHS without putting any more pressure on primary care. So if you imagine suddenly everybody getting that telephone consultation had to go in and do the pot of pee, yeah. you know, we've got a way to, to, to really drive value there. We can also then keep that pharmacy first model of actually go to the pharmacist rather than needing to go to the GP. Pharmacist, if it becomes an NHS model, the pharmacist would have a really crucial role because if you're giving it out for free, you just need to make sure that eligibility is done properly somebody has a temperature and low back pain, they do need to be kind of channeled to um, a walk-in centre or an A&E or a GP rather than going through the model. So I think pharmacy has a key role, but you're making it much more accessible. So I'm really excited about 2021 from this point of view. It feels like the blocks are now in place to really try and get a, a national approach to this in the same way that we've managed for our kidney testing, which isn't particularly femtech, but we now got a kind of big scale deal for. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, well done. That's really impressive. And I love the approach that, that you took. And I can certainly see there's so many ways that it would benefit women, but it kind of in the, in the obvious way that you described, but actually I can think of a lot of examples personally where the GP said to me, oh, you, you know, you probably should just, you know, do a urine test as well. And I just kind of, you know, with you so much going on in your, in your life, you know, the kind of hassle factor of, of doing it, um, that actually if it was so much more convenient for you, that actually you would, and, you know, then, you know, other things um, that, that need to be picked up in, in certain people's cases would actually happen. So I can see a, a huge number of different user cases here. So thank you. Um, uh, yeah, really exciting, really exciting. Um, so what's next? You know, what, what's next for, for you um, and, and, for, and for Femtech, do you think? So I think it would really be really interesting to know, actually, do you have, you know, do you have any advice for other, I know you said you're not a kind of, you know, wouldn't class yourself necessarily as a femtech company, but I mean, I think you've shared a great example here, though, of kind of how to go about things, but do you have any top tips or anything like that? Um, yeah, sure. So I think one of the things when you ask what, what's next, one of the things we haven't really talked about so much is the maternity pathway, which yes, yeah. earlier. Um, when I first came into the market here with this product, um, I thought maternity was going to be the easy slam dunk yeah, of the yeah. pathway. <laughs> um, and, you know, you're asking me for advice. Maybe I need advice from some of the people you're engaging with. Um, it's completely uh, normal now in Israel where we're with three of the large HMOs to do your urine testing for pregnancy um, mm. using the kit. It's absolutely established um, in three of, out of four of the large HMOs over there. We've done usability study at Johns Hopkins where we found again 94% of women said they prefer to do the testing at home. Uh, and really interestingly, we found across 150 women that we did usability testing with, we found 40 different types of mobile phone. We were testing in Baltimore, where Johns Hopkins is based. And I think it's really interesting that, I mean, I didn't even really realize there were 40 different types of mobile phone. Oh, yeah. and, <laughs> in the wife. <laughs> very, a very diverse population. You have yeah, the Apple women at Bayview with their Apple products. And yeah. then you have this whole range of low rent Androids, which actually is really is fascinating. fascinating kind of trying to make sure you're accessible and you're improving mm. your quality to be usable really across that whole diverse range of, of, of phones. 
So when I came into the NHS with those sort of two case studies and that evidence, international global evidence, I thought, mm -hmm. well, kind of straightforward, this is where mm -hmm. I need to really focus. Um, and we are working uh, in a um, hospital in Bath at the moment um, to really trial our product. And we are finding, again, really positive feedback from women who we're particularly focusing on women at high risk of preeclampsia who are coming into the hospital two or three times a week um, to have blood pressure monitoring, urine testing and um, fecal measurement at least once of those three times. But we're basically able to show that two out of three times you can stay at home or stay at work, not take half a day off, not have to take the pot, not have to get on the bus, not have to find someone else to look after your kids, whatever your life circumstances are. Mm -hmm and know that you're being safely measured and monitored because we've combined the blood pressure monitoring with the urine testing and self-measurement can go into the app and the clinician sees that in real time and that goes then into the clinical record. Um, the challenge that I have, and I think this is where I would kind of then try and think about the advice question uh, related to it, is you know the way that maternity is paid for, the way that um, the other parts of the kind of the pathway work, Essentially, I think during this COVID time in pregnancy, we've seen women just not getting services. They're just at home having telephonic interaction or they're having to come in. And mm. it is really easy to kind of unpack, which, you know, you do have to redesign the entire pathway in order yeah. to get this piece of it to work properly. Um, and, you know, I think one of the things we don't value typically explicitly in the NHS, much as every individual professional working there, mm would be very yeah, I think you know what you're going to say. <laughs> in the heart. We don't value in the systemic way the experience of women and their, um, you know, their time and their kind of the process they have to go through. Mm. So you're, you tend to get to this, well, people say, oh, well, they have to, people have to come in anyway. Mm. And, oh, well, people don't mind bringing in their sample. Oh, they don't mind, we do the urine testing at the end of the clinic and they don't mind waiting mm. the extra 20 minutes to go mm. through that process. You're just like gosh any woman I, I know dog would definitely mind a um and yeah. b um you know especially at the moment you don't want to have to come into the hospital and expose yourself to you know everything that's going on um so i think cracking maternity is what is next and understanding yeah. how we uh, you know what evidence further evidence base we need to actually enable this to happen as a matter of course um and I think my advice would be, you know, I, th I think it's really complicated. It takes a really long time. Mm -hmm. You have to, even when you come in feeling like you've got really strong evidence from global kind of markets, you still have to build that evidence here in the UK. You mm -hmm. need to find the right partners to do that, the right champions. Um, but you, and, but I would really counsel the patients. So I'd say, you know, we're now in our third year on the kidney testing and, you know, it took a, an initial rollout sponsored by Yorkshire and Humber HSN, followed by a health economic evaluation that York and Humber, that York Health Economic Consortium did, followed by a care city test bed in North London that was um, that the, the HSN in London supported us on and, and care city themselves, followed by a pilot in a Sussex hospital through a, somebody we met and who was prepared to take 100 kits and give it a go. And that then gave us the opportunity to sell our first organic kind of deal in um, Dorset, which is still small, but um, mm. then to get to our first citywide launch in Leeds, which is now scaled. And then finally to have got the AI transformation fund win that we've got, which is now allowing us to go to 635,000 people this next um, 18 mm. months. So that's the sort of, you know, takes time, takes navigation, takes patience, mm. but mm. stick with it because ultimately mm. I think the macro environment out there is changing a lot, um, particularly with the, the pandemic around, you know, we do need to move to this new model and therefore every opportunity is there for you. Yeah, that's great. Um, great advice and also really, really kind of brought it to life really nicely for, for anyone that's listening. I think that, um, it's yeah it's, it sounds like there's um you know a lot of lessons that, that you've got that others can learn from but also there's just a huge amount um, more that, that's going to happen as well a lot of a lot of women um that are going to benefit from from the technology but it does it takes that time to kind of yeah. bring those pieces together and once you get that momentum you're kind of unstoppable really yeah. but, i think if you unleash the women's voices in this it'll be extraordinary yeah. i think you start to see that in uti 
but in maternity it's like if women realize they didn't have to use those toilets in the hospital or you know carry this pot in their handbag and yeah. maybe not even come in as often to the hospital as previously and have that visibility that you described into this is what's going on and i can now judge for myself what impact it's having over time it's huge um but yet we haven't yet found that voice and that way to get kind of the the momentum moving but mm. we were and really interesting also to hear you mention NHSN so much. So for anyone that isn't familiar with the acronym, that's Academic Health Science Networks, and there are 15 across the UK. And I know that um, many of the NHSNs, as you said, Catherine, have supported you uh, and are kind of helping being that kind of conduit between yourselves and different NHS organisations. So it's great to hear um, the support that, that you've, you've received there too. So thank you so much for your time. Um, was there anything else that you wanted to share? I mean, you've shared so many great things already. But uh... no, no, thank you for, for asking me. And um, one of the things that I've learned is that we're not, we haven't been formally defined in the femtech space um, mm -hmm. for some reason. Uh, you pointed this out. <laughs> uh, but really now I've learned out more. It's like we really should be in there. So yeah. it's like, how do we, you know, access this world and make sure that we are mm -hmm. part of the agenda for how we can improve women's experience through using tech. Yeah, absolutely. No, I think that um, you know, for any kind of uh, femtech entrepreneurs out there listening, that you you know really shared some um, some great kind of tips and experiences, which um, I'm sure that they would find helpful. So thank you. Really appreciate your time. Thank you. <laughs>